Good morning and welcome to worship on this fifth Sunday in Lent. Each Sunday morning at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m., we have in-person services of Holy Communion. Each Wednesday at 12.10 p.m., we also have an abbreviated service of Holy Communion. And then at 7 p.m. during the season of Lent, we have Lenten Vespers. Please join us for these additional worship opportunities. We now prepare our hearts and minds for worship during the prelude.
Let us join together in the order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of steadfast love, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have wandered from your ways. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to forgive those who have sinned against us. Have mercy on us, create in us new hearts, and restore to us the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Creator God, you prepare a new way in the wilderness, and your grace waters our desert. Open our hearts to be transformed by the new thing you are doing, that our lives may proclaim the extravagance of your love given to all through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. 
He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The remote 19th century Danish village was home to a small, pious religious community. Two elderly sisters whose father had founded the austere sect take in a refugee from the Franco-Prussian War as their cook and housekeeper. Unbeknownst to the villagers, Babette had been a Parisian chef before fleeing the city. Sometime later, after winning 10,000 francs in the French lottery, Babette wants to repay the sisters for their kindness and offers to cook a French meal for them and their friends on the 100th anniversary of their father's birth. Now, as we know from the book and movie of the same name, Babette's Feast is an extravagant culinary affair. She imports the finest of foods and libations to make this meal of a lifetime for the villagers. Once the exotic imported ingredients begin to arrive, the unsophisticated community members suspect that something unholy is about to take place. But once the meal is underway, distrust and superstitions begin to fade away, and the pious find themselves swept away by an eye-opening transformational experience of grace that elevates them both physically and spiritually. Old wrongs are forgotten, ancient loves are rekindled, and a mystical redemption of the human spirit settles over the table. By the time the incredible evening is over, the extravagance of Babette's feast had become an act of self-sacrifice, costing her all 10,000 francs of her lottery windfall. Extravagance is also the order of the day in the gospel reading we just heard. Jesus of Nazareth and his disciples are on their way to Jerusalem six days before Jewish Passover. Keep in mind that the powers that be are already plotting against Jesus. A confrontation is brewing in Jerusalem, partially because Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead, a story that appears in the Gospel according to John in the chapter right before today's reading about the dinner in Bethany with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. We can imagine a celebratory spirit in the air. After all, Lazarus, who had been dead and stinking in the grave, is now alive. Martha, in true fashion, is serving everyone when Mary brings out a pound of very expensive perfume, anoints Jesus' feet with it, and then wipes his feet with her hair, an act that is outrageously extravagant and provocative. The whole house is filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Mary spends a fortune motivated by love 
She makes herself poor for her Lord. Judas angrily accuses Mary of wasting perfume that could have been sold for a market value equal to almost a year's wages. He is indignant at such extravagance when the proceeds could have been given to the poor. His motives, however, are less than sincere since he is said to be a common thief. Jesus doesn't let Judas' grumbling go unchallenged. Leave Mary alone, he says. She bought the perfume so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Over the centuries, these words about the poor always being with us have been used and abused by those who wish to defend their selfishness and their non-involvement with the needs of the poor. So many fail to realize that Jesus' words are quoted from Deuteronomy 15. If there is anybody poor among you, do not harden your heart or close your hand. The poor will be with you always. Therefore, I give you this commandment. You must be open-handed to your brothers and sisters, to the needy, and to the poor in your land. Jesus acknowledges Mary's generous, extravagant, open-handed, open-hearted, and outrageous gift. It was outrageous that a woman from a respectable family would pour perfume over the feet of a dinner guest and appear in public in the company of men with her hair unbound. Jesus was heading toward a deadly showdown in Jerusalem, and Mary anoints his feet. However, Mary anoints Jesus with more than just perfume. In the intimacy of her touch, she communicates her love for Jesus as he faces the most difficult of ordeals. The smell of the perfume permeates the entire house. Symbolically, this beautiful act of love leaves a scent strong enough to last until the final day of Jesus' life. Symbolically, this beautiful act leaves the faint but certain smell of love that surrounds all acts of love, both extravagant and simple. Sometimes life just stinks, and the only way to overcome the stench is to break open extravagance so that the sweet scent of compassion can fill us with the love we and others need to persist and survive. In response to God's extravagant love, in response to the Christ's presence in our midst, we are called to respond with love. We are called to give and not to count the cost. We are called to follow the path of sacrificial love so that we can be little Christs to one another. We are called to be extravagant in our loving so that in us the fragrance of the Christ can overcome that which stinks. And together, even the poor will be able to bask in the sweet aroma of our solidarity with them, of our extravagant love and our generosity. May we, like Mary, like Babette, toss caution to the wind and be as extravagant as we can be. May the life-giving and life-sustaining fragrance of the extravagant Christ breathe in and with and through us for the sake of the world.
Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy God, in times of both joy and sorrow, you call us to worship you. Bless the work of musicians, altar guilds, ushers, lectors, presiding and assisting ministers, and all who serve in worship. Sustain them with your spirit as we journey toward Holy Week. Lord, in your mercy. Creative God, you made every living creature and saw that it was good. Teach us to care for and tend all creation for the fragile gift it is. Lord, in your mercy. Living God, you require mercy and justice. Bless the work of all organizations that work to address human needs, especially Lutheran disaster response and Lutheran world relief. Lord, in your mercy. Compassionate God, you make a way out of no way. Give your peace and vision to all who struggle with addiction, depression, grief, or illness. Make plain that in the midst of suffering, you are suffering, and that your desire is wholeness and life. Lord, in your mercy. Shepherding God, you tend your flock with mercy and love. Guide the outreach ministries of this congregation. Strengthen our relationships in this community as we serve our neighbors in love. Lord, in your mercy. Triune God, in you there is abundant life. Deepen our union with you, that in living we may die, and in dying we may live with all your saints. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together as we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Our service now begins, marked with the cross of Christ. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.